So hello everyone, today we're here with Ege. So my name is Victoria and we're going to be discussing a little bit more about the evolution of the cybercrime industry, especially the malware as a service and ransomware as a service servers. So before we're going to dive into the topic, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about yourself and what you do within the company. Sure. Hi, um, my name is Ege Balji and I'm the Threat Intelligence Division Manager in Product. And um, over the years, I've done a lot of things in the industry, including malware analysis, vulnerability research, uh, forensic analysis, exploit development, but mostly threat intelligence. So today I'm here to answer all your questions, hopefully. Okay, so then let's just get into this. So while you were doing the research, what have you found out about the motifs of the cyber criminals and other threat actors? Why are they compelled to enter the cyber crime industry? Well, it's very really hard to know the exact motive of someone, but uh, in most cases it's financial. Uh, there are, of course, other motives such as um, cyber espionage, hacktivism, and sometimes even just for fun mm -hmm. and ego. Oh, ego plays a big role in this? I heard this yeah, before, so I'm just wondering. Exactly, yeah. Mm. So when you're looking at how the cybercrime industry looked before and how it looks now, can you tell us more about the evolution of it, about certain milestones or something in that sort? Yeah, of course. Um, in Prodov, we have been monitoring cyber criminals for more than 11 years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, during this time frame, the biggest evolution uh, we, we saw was probably the rapidly changing business models mm -hmm. of cyber criminals. Because as I explained earlier, uh, the biggest motive is generally financial mm -hmm. gain. So just like a legitimate business, the cyber criminals are trying to uh, stay alive in their uh, in their industry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So as you were pointing out at the beginning, it's probably or it was a little bit different than it's nowadays. Were there any specific, let's say, years or situations where the face of the cybercrime industry just changed completely? Yeah, the most important milestone is probably the invention of cryptocurrencies mm -hmm. uh, because the Bitcoin was founded in 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, it literally created a whole uh, new underground economy in mm -hmm. the uh, cybercrime industry. And um, another big milestone would be the uh, emergence of this uh, as a service concept. Mm -hmm. So these malware as a service, ransomware as a service uh, platforms. Mm -hmm. So uh, those kind of platforms are gaining popularity each day, even mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, those can be counted as a big milestone. Yeah. So do you know something about like how they emerged at the beginning? How did it start? Was it deliberate from any threat actor or did it just happen by accident that all of a sudden we have malware as a service or ransomware as a service? Well, uh, it's hard to say, but uh, as I as I said, uh, the cybercrime industry is very much like mm -hmm. a, um, you could say they are, the cyber criminals are very much like mm -hmm. uh, legitimate business owners. Yeah. So. Uh, they evolved their way of doing business. Mm -hmm. uh, so this uh, as a service concept is also gaining popularity in the uh, uh -huh. normal, the other industries. Uh -huh. So they just created new platforms and uh, started serving to other cyber criminals. Yeah. That's the main yeah. reason. I guess. So, so why do you think that nowadays they're gaining so much popularity as you already outlined? Well, uh, because the main reason is mostly uh, convenience mm -hmm. because it's easier and much safer for the yeah. cyber criminals. And um, th these kinds of services uh, reduce the overall risk a lot mm -hmm. because uh, when you're using a malware as a service platform, you don't need to write the malware code. You don't mm. need to uh, host the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. You don't need to maintain your servers. Mm -hmm. uh, you just need to infect your own victims. Mm -hmm. And this reduces the risk a lot for any cyber criminal. Mm -hmm. This makes it very uh, convenient. Yeah, convenient for cyber criminals. Mm -hmm. So are there any specific features of Malware as a service and then ransomware as a service. Are they similar in a sense or are they very different? Well, they're very much similar, but uh, the biggest similarity is probably the hidden infrastructure mm -hmm. because those services are often hosted on Tor network as a hidden service. Mm -hmm. So the hidden infrastructure is the most similar part, you could say. Mm -hmm. And then some differences, you know, for someone who is not familiar with the concept, for example, how would you be able to describe what does it actually mean malware as a service and then ransomware as a service? 
Well, uh, as you can, of course, guess by the name, ransomware as a service is dedicated to ransomware only. Mm -hmm. The platforms are designed for generating the malware and mm -hmm. negotiating with the victims, the mm -hmm. ransomware victims. On the other hand, malware as a service platforms are designed for generating the malware mm -hmm. and managing your botnet, managing mm -hmm. your victims and your victim data. That's the main difference. So speaking of the victim data, I know in your previous work, you also mentioned platforms that are able to resell this data or purchase the data of the victims. Can you tell us more about this? Because it feels like it's directly connected to the cybercrime industry. Yes, exactly. There are, uh, there are a lot of credential markets mm -hmm. uh, which are selling uh, victim data, victim mm -hmm. credentials, and uh, most of the time tailored access to yeah. systems and servers. And they also are gaining a lot of popularity mm -hmm. nowadays. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're a cyber criminal, is it actually easy to get access to those or? Yeah, uh, in most cases, they require some form of a um, referral mm -hmm. in order to get into the uh, platform in order to create mm -hmm. an account. But uh, you could say it's very easy yeah. uh, when you go to any underground malware forum, mm -hmm. you can find a referral code and invite code and you could just create a, an account. Mm -hmm. After that, it allows you to purchase credentials, victim data. It's very easy and convenient mm. for cyber So criminals. it's also a question of convenience, yeah? Yeah, exactly. If you're mentioning referrals, do they also work for malware and ransomware? For example, if new threat actors want to sort of like enter that server, is it the same thing? Is it about like referrals? Is it about certain connections? Uh, for malware, for most of the malware as a service platforms, uh, you don't need any kind of refer referral. Mm -hmm. uh, you could just pay to get in, pay mm -hmm. to use. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the case of uh, ransomware platforms, mm -hmm. ransomware as a service platforms, uh, you need to pass certain kind of te tests for getting into the ransomware group. Mm -hmm. So they need to test you just like a legitimate mm -hmm. business. They're giving you a couple of tasks and mm -hmm. they are trying to understand your skill level and uh, they're trying to determine whether they can trust you or not. So it's also a question of loyalty and sort of understanding if you're not gonna... Yes. Oh. Yes, exactly. So this is, it's indeed like in an actual organization, if you think about it. Yeah. So then are there also any risks, like big risks associated with using those servers and the platforms? Uh, well, the owners of those platforms are taking on the biggest risks mm -hmm. because the biggest risks are the uh, hosting the infrastructure, maintaining those mm -hmm. servers and keeping them hidden. Yeah. Because uh, just like us, uh, many other cyber uh, cyber intelligence, threat intelligence companies are mm -hmm. uh, researching ways of de-anonymizing those servers, as, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, with law, law yeah. enforcement. So that's the biggest risk, mm -hmm. you could say. Do you think that they're also considering those risks before they're starting to use malware as a service or ransomware as a service? Or do you think like the idea of a financial gain is just so stark that it sort of sweeps away the risks associated with it? Yeah, it's very hard to know, but mm -hmm. um, in most cases, they prefer these kinds of platforms because mm -hmm. it reduces the risk a lot. The, the mm -hmm. owners of the platform takes majority of the risk. You, mm -hmm. you just use it. You just... Uh, you're just responsible for infecting your own victims yeah. and managing your data. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing at the end of the day. So it's not a lot of effort as well, right? Yeah, it's it's getting uh, getting easier each day, you could say. I think, yeah, if you're a threat actor, it seems very convenient. Yeah, exactly. Um, so thinking about all of those sort of threats that are lurking from anywhere, what would you recommend to any organizations or businesses that might know re might not know how to protect themselves, what they can do to make sure that they're not going to be compromised? Uh, well, for businesses, we suggest uh, any kind of threat intelligence service. This mm -hmm. could be a platform, this could be a product or a mm -hmm. manual service, mm -hmm. you could say. Yeah. And for individuals, we suggest the use of uh, two-factor authentication mm -hmm. and password managers. Uh, those two uh, can mitigate most of the uh, information stealer type malware attacks mm -hmm. and uh, some employee awareness trainings may also help for businesses. Mm -hmm. So that's all. Do you think normally they're aware about everything that is happening in the cyber sphere or I don't know if you have any experience with other companies understanding the, the level of threats that are they're standing against? Uh, no, unfortunately not. But um, 
yeah, we unfortunately the criminals are always one step ahead. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's the situation nowadays. Mm -hmm. we, we could say, yeah. So when you see what is happening, what would you say is your prediction about this industry, about cybercrime, about using Mover and ransomware as a service? What do you think is going to happen in the next, let's say, months, years? Uh, well, it's very hard to predict things in the uh, cybersecurity mm -hmm. industry, but. Mm -hmm. Uh, the way we see it, the malware as a service industry is moving towards um, supplying tailored access mm -hmm. and to uh, other cyber criminals and yeah. uh, uh, and credential markets. Mm -hmm. So we could say that in the future, the uh, users of those malware as a service platforms will be uh, less. Mm -hmm. You could say, mm -hmm. but um, on the contrary, the uh, ransomware as a service platforms will increase. Because uh, the ease of access, uh, mm -hmm. because of the ease of access to the victim data and mm -hmm. the credentials, mm -hmm. so that's how we see it currently. Do you think it can also like evolve within that part, like ransomware as a service? It can get even like better and more efficient in any way. Can you somehow predict this? You know. Yeah, it's very hard to say. We'll yeah, see. Hard let's, to. <laughs> yeah. let's just hope for the best, right? Yeah. <laughs> So then I think if we are about to conclude it, uh, make sure that you have the right either threat intelligence or any sort of like two factor authentication in that sense. So do you think it's okay to have just like SMS or, you know, text message coming to your phone or you need to have like a special application for that? Well, for uh, two factor authentication, we suggest the use of soft OTP apps. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't recommend using uh, SMS or mm -hmm. email for second factor authentication. Uh, soft OTP apps such as Google Authenticator or OT mm -hmm. will work just fine. Mm -hmm. Those are the best options currently. And for the end users and also for organizations? Yes, or? For, for both, mm -hmm. for, for everyone. <laughs> as many protection measures yeah. as possible, yes? <laughs> exactly. So are you actually hopeful yourself about some positive predictions or evolutions? For example, you know, from the from the side of like law enforcement or like other private companies being able to deal with such threats. Well, again, this is a very very hard mm -hmm. thing to predict. But uh, as the technology uh, improves, uh, it works uh, both ways. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, as for the cyber criminals and uh, for the uh, security companies. Mm -hmm. uh, but unfortunately, as I said, they're always one step ahead. So. Mm -hmm. We have to stay two steps yeah. ahead, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so is there something else that you haven't mentioned so far or some interesting observation that you have done throughout your research? <laughs> Shared everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so in that case, I would like to thank you for your time and for sharing those insights. So I hope that everyone was able to uh, get some new insights as well from this conversation. and. Yeah, if people have any questions, they can definitely contact us and, and talk to you directly if it's necessary. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Thank you.